I never knew that to answer the question, how do we really treat people with sleep apnea, has such a difficult answer. I agree. Even if I read many times and with responsibility during my trainings as a physician about this topic, I was never directly involved in this matter by having someone close to me with this condition. But still, the things described in the medical books look much more quiet than they are in the reality. And nowadays, we can see the whole reality uncovered before our eyes by simple navigation on the internet. Hello everyone, I am Dr. Narcisa Yanopol, and in this video, I want to talk about sleep apnea treatment in the year 2022. We do not treat sleep apnea in my specialty as eye doctor and surgeon. So when I read articles on the internet or when I'm listening to videos about this condition, I am like you, trying to use common sense to understand all the explanations and to believe in the good intentions of those who wrote the material. Because of my background as a physician, when the explanations go deeper in the medical terms and mechanisms, I may or may not understand what is said in the published or online materials, depending on the logic of the explanations, if a logic does exist in the text. So what remained valid in my mind, if I would be myself a patient with sleep apnea, though the big question has a difficult answer. There are some true things that are probably mandatory to be known by everyone. To ask the advice of a specialist in this matter. To try to find out more than just the explanations received in the medical offices. And best source is the internet. And to accept and follow only what is explained by the specialist and looks logical and is based on facts and specific factors for that particular patient. When I saw this image, my mind went directly to the question that pops nowadays in the mind of every patient with sleep apnea. Does CPAP machine really resolve my problem with obstructive sleep apnea episodes? Can a flow of air at any pressure stay against the muscles and soft tissues of the throat and keep the throat open when all the muscles and tissues in the body are relaxed during sleep? I leave the answer to this question for you and for your sleep apnea specialist because indeed every throat has its story and every patient is different. In this image, the dwarf is the air and the hand of a giant are the muscles and soft tissues in the throat. Because of this question that in my mind does not have an unanimous answer for every patient with sleep apnea, I decided that I will only present to you the things that I read online and in my medical books about sleep apnea treatment and I kept as valid because the explanations given look to me correct and logical. Before we dive in, I want to state that all the information contained in this video and all related articles from YouTube, my website iStoryWithNarcisa and my other social media platforms are for education only. They do not provide any medical advice to anyone, do not support any treatment for any patient, and are only meant to provide information to people about medical conditions that should be treated by specialized physicians only after they examine the patient and decided with the patient what is the best option to fit the benefits with the least possible side effects and risks. For more information, please read the chapter Disclosures and Agreement, Privacy Policy on my website at the link provided in the description below this video. As a short recap, there are two main forms of sleep apnea, central sleep apnea, in which there are abnormal central nervous mechanisms in the brain, 
affecting the regulation of breathing, and obstructive sleep apnea, the vast majority of cases in which the mechanisms of stops in breathing are explained by the relaxation of the soft tissues and muscles of the throat that block the airway intermittently during sleep. Sleep apnea has different severities ranging from mild form to severe forms that can endanger the life of a patient. The diagnosis is established by sleep apnea specialist physicians using the sleep test. Sleep apnea is a chronic condition that lasts many years in some patients lifelong. The treatment is complex in both main forms of sleep apnea and in mixed forms even more complex than in the simple ones. To have a decent or good quality of life as a patient with sleep apnea, one needs to have first a clear diagnosis and clarification of the causes that produce the stop in breathing, needs to have a treatment plan, and very importantly, a close follow-up to be sure that the treatment works properly. When we decide to start a treatment in medicine, we, as doctors, have in mind several goals. To resolve the cause of the disease whenever this is possible. When the cause is unknown, we try to stop the progression of the disease. We need to alleviate symptoms like pain, etc and also to treat complications and consequences of the disease. Having these goals in mind, I will organize the next slides about the treatment in sleep apnea as answers to the questions. Is the cause known? If yes, how do we resolve or address it? Can we stop the progression? If yes, how? Are the symptoms or consequences of the disease bothering the patient? If yes, how do we address or manage them? I will also explain all the known, realistically possible and internationally accepted medical knowledge about each of the two main forms of sleep apnea, central sleep apnea and obstructive sleep apnea. Practically, all the other variants like pediatric versus adult or mixed form of sleep apnea treatments are based on the principles of the two basic forms. You will not find out in this video more than just mention briefly research in the treatment of sleep apnea or other treatments that I, in my position of possible patient and already practicing physician, I accept as correct and scientifically demonstrated as valid and safe. That is why some treatments described in other online publications may not be mentioned in my video. Let's take one by one the questions and understand them better for each of the central versus obstructive sleep apnea types. In medicine, when we are looking for a cause, and try to address it by treatment, we call this etiologic treatment. To understand how the causes of the sleep apnea actually produce stops in breathing, we need to understand that there are centers in the brain that regulate a specific rhythm for breathing as couples of breathing in followed by breathing out. The activity of these centers depends on the blood levels of oxygen and carbon dioxide, the two gases important for the chemical reactions to produce energy in all the cells in the human body. The oxygen and carbon dioxide are called chemomediators. These two gases are in correlation one to each other. When one of them increases in the blood, the other one decreases. When we breathe in, the air with oxygen goes into the airways to the lung, smallest components called pulmonary alveoli, where the oxygen goes into the blood so that its concentration in the blood increases. In response, 
the concentration of carbon dioxide decreases in breathing in called inspiration. The processes are inverse in expiration or breathing out when the oxygen levels in the blood gradually decrease because the carbon dioxide level builds up and rises. Through nervous system, in a complex correlation with the brain centers that regulate breathing, are also other parts of the body like the throat, called pharynx and larynx, the muscles of the rib cage, and also the diaphragm, the muscle that separates the abdomen from the chest. The higher concentration of carbon dioxide stimulates the breathing center in a so-called respiratory drive to send signals to all structures in the body involved in breathing in. The respiratory centers of breathing are located in the medulla and pons of the brainstem that are parts of the brain. These centers are in the lower part of the brain, close to the place where the spinal cord goes out from the skull and enters the spinal canal that is called foramen magnum. You can see this place shown in the slide by the tip of the arrow. The causes of central sleep apnea are multiple and the mechanisms in which the activity of respiratory centers are affected to produce stops in breathing are many times very complex. Because this video is designed for regular people and not for medical professionals, I will only briefly explain how some factors and conditions may be related to central sleep apnea without entering in complex details. In central sleep apnea, different factors or conditions influence directly or indirectly the centers of breathing, so the etiologic treatment of central sleep apnea should target these causes and attempt to resolve them. In relation to the mechanism through which these factors or conditions produce the stops in breathing, the central sleep apnea is further divided into two main categories, hypoventilation type central sleep apnea and hyperventilation type. The hypoventilation type of central sleep apnea is produced by factors or conditions that reduce the respiratory drive in the respiratory centers of the brain. These are demographic risk factors like age over 60 or male gender, drugs, other substances and medications like opioids, for example, heroin, morphine, oxycodone, etc. Benzodiazepines like Xanax, Librium, etc. Barbiturates like Seconal, Numbutal, Amital. Sedatives, alcohol, codeine, fentanyl, nicotine, all of this can produce central sleep apnea. The narcotics like opioids produce narcotic induced central sleep apnea by reducing the ability of the respiratory centers to initiate and regulate breathing. Some studies show that 24% of opioids users can develop central sleep apnea. All these chemical agents that produce depression of the nervous system can further drive down the activity of respiratory centers and produce central sleep apnea. A particular increased risk of depression of the respiratory centers and death is in people mixing drugs of abuse like uppers with draw downers, for example, alcohol with energy drinks or other combinations. This work 
aims to raise awareness of such possibilities in people who are diagnosed with sleep apnea and the cause is not clearly identified, or sometimes the identification of one factor like obstructive sleep apnea is considered enough and more efforts are not taken to identify all causes and to address all of them. Such people may continue to make use of the drug or medications that depress the respiratory centers. They use the CPAP machine for so-called obstructive sleep apnea when in fact they have mixed form of sleep apnea and the treatment fails sometimes ending tragically in death. Chronic kidney disease can produce central sleep apnea in about 10% of the cases, according to some studies. Brain lesions with direct impact on respiratory centers produce central sleep apnea related to a medical condition. For example, Arnold Chiari malformation, tumors, trauma, hemorrhages, intracranial hypertension, strokes of the brain stem are all factors with direct mechanical or functional effect on the respiratory centers. Because of particular position of the respiratory centers close to the foramen magnum and the exit from the skull of the spinal cord, breathing may be affected in multiple situations in which this lower part of the brain has various lesions, for example, in trauma, increased intracranial pressure from brain hemorrhages, or in a congenital abnormality of the brain that is called Arnold Chiari malformation. In this last mentioned abnormality, the lower part of the brain is abnormally lower than the brain level, and in some situations, the brain gets engaged in the foramen magnum together with the spinal cord that goes out of the skull. Consequently, it can be an increased pressure on the pons and medulla in the region with breathing centers that may produce stopping breathing. That is why it is very important for all the patients with suspected central sleep apnea to have a an MRI or the CT of the brain to exclude this Arnold Chiari malformation. The central sleep apnea due to neuromuscular disease can appear in multiple sclerosis or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or other similar conditions in which the extreme weakness of the respiratory muscles can produce central sleep apnea. The pediatric central sleep apnea in children appears more often in congenital central hypoventilation syndrome in which there is a congenital defect that makes lack of signal for breathing in the brain in these newborns or very young children. Also, the central sleep apnea can appear in premature babies due to multiple consequences of immaturity of the nervous system in prematurity. The hyperventilation type of central sleep apnea is characterized by abnormal breathing type or high concentration of oxygen in the blood and low carbon dioxide that reduces consequently the respiratory drive. This type appears in the following situations. Cardiovascular disorders like stroke, heart failure, atrial fibrillation, and other rhythm problems. On one hand, ischemia in all of these conditions produces depression of the respiratory centers and thus dysfunctions in their breathing activity. On the other hand, because the brain centers regulating cardiovascular and respiratory functions in the brain are connected, 
but also because in cardiovascular conditions, the amount of blood delivered to the brain and other organs is less than satisfactory, patients with these cardiovascular conditions have a particular pattern of breathing called Jane Stokes breathing. In these types of breathing, small and large breaths are followed by long pauses in the breathing because of abnormal regulation of the breathing in the brain. According to some research studies, 70% of people with stroke can develop central sleep apnea in the first 72 hours after the event. This percentage decreases to only 17% after three months from the event. Living at high altitude is another factor that can produce central sleep apnea because of continuous high concentration of oxygen that alters the respiratory drive in the respiratory centers in the brain. That is why people living or going in geographic areas with high altitude can develop this condition. The use of CPAP machine in patients with obstructive sleep apnea can produce treatment emergent central sleep apnea component and finally mixed sleep apnea. This is because CPAP machine is flowing continuously high oxygen level that alter the respiratory drive because the oxygen levels are maintained high and carbon dioxide is kept low too. In some cases, this type of central sleep apnea resolves, resolves on its own. And finally, there is an idiopathic central sleep apnea in which the cause of the stops in breathing is not identified. For more information about this chapter, you can read my website article that you can access by clicking the link in the description below this video. Some of the cases with central sleep apnea have the stop in breathing due to factors that cannot be stopped, like age, or have unpredictable evolution like stroke or heart failure. Other conditions like atrial fibrillation, chronic kidney disease, etc. can be treated so that the depression of the respiratory centers in the brain to be reduced so that finally the general status of the patient will be improved. Finally, the drugs of abuse sedatives, downers, or other known factors that can be stopped definitely have a clear benefit in the progression or even resolution of the central sleep apnea. If you have sleep apnea, do not get satisfied with only the diagnosis of obstructive sleep apnea that is in about 99% of cases a part of the problem. Review all the other possible causes and be sure you do not have also other factors that may influence the normal function of the respiratory centers in the brain. Only a complete diagnosis and address of as much as possible all the etiologic factors can give the best results for the treatment. The majority of the cases with sleep apnea have more than one single factor that influences or produces the breathing issues during sleep. The symptoms experienced by a patient with central sleep apnea may be very complex, especially in cases with associated medical conditions or drugs or medication use that themselves are producing symptoms. We will focus on the symptoms related strictly to the central sleep apnea and I will briefly explain for each of them what measures can be taken to resolve these conditions. Episodes with shallow or stopping breathing are the defining symptoms of all cases with sleep apnea. As compared to patients with obstructive sleep apnea in whom usually the apnea episodes 
come after loud snoring, blockage, and gasping. In patients with sleep apnea of central causes, the snoring and blockage of the throat are not so obvious unless the patient has both clinical types in so-called mixed sleep apnea. Sometimes the treatment of the cause, if it is abuse of a drug or medical condition, may improve the breathing response. In other severe cases, the patient may need admission in intensive care unit and respiratory devices for assisted respiration in order to live. The role of CPAP machine is not to assist in generation and maintaining of breathing cycles because, as you could see in the previous slides, the CPAP continuous release of air increases the oxygen level in the blood and, if anything, it may reduce the respiratory drive in the brain centers of breathing. But the role of CPAP machine in all the cases with sleep apnea remains the same to increase the oxygen level in the blood before the lack of oxygen can create complications. I know some specialized publications leave this explanation in limbo, but this is my take-home understanding about the role of CPAP machine from everything that I read in the preparation of this video from professional medical and online bibliography about sleep apnea treatment. The treatment of complex medical conditions that led to central sleep apnea must be done with collaboration between appropriate specialist physicians from multiple specialties for the patient to get the proper and efficient treatment. Another set of symptoms is low level of oxygen in the tissues called hypoxia as a result of cessation of breathing that is more a complication than a symptom but it can be followed by multiple symptoms if the case gets complicated with stroke, heart attack, kidney failure, even brain damage, etc. as a result of lack of enough oxygen by the body organs. To prevent these further complications and help the body to overcome the inadequate breathing comes the CPAP or BPAP or similar devices that are in these cases very valuable tools if the patient is not hospitalized to have assisted respiration with other more complex machines. All the symptoms related to the lack of adequate sleep like tiredness, drowsiness, fatigue, sleepiness, altered concentration, alertness, memory, altered coordination and fine movements, impairment of judgment, mood changes, irritability, increased appetite, etc. All of these are present in all cases with central or obstructive sleep apnea. Watch the next video and visit the website iStory with Narcisa at the link provided in the description below this video to learn more about all of these topics, including the section 5 entitled CPAP machines from the collection Sleep Snoring and Sleep Apnea on Our Union Project. In pure obstructive sleep apnea, there is a complex of anatomical and pathological factors that act together during sleep producing intermittent obstruction of the throat and apneic episodes. This form of sleep apnea is characterized by loud snoring in contrast uh, with central sleep apnea cases who do not necessarily snore unless there is an obstructive component in mixed type of sleep apnea. Before the complete obstruction of the throat, the patient usually snores deeply, then throat is blocked, 
then there is a gasping when the apneic episodes happen and the patient usually wakes up because of sudden stop in breathing that triggers a fight and flight reaction in the body. During the sleep, when the whole body relaxes, if the patient is sleeping on the backside, the relaxed tongue and all the other relaxed soft tissues of the throat plus the lower jaw advance backwards obstructing the throat and stopping the flow of the air into the respiratory tree. People with obstructive sleep apnea have some particular characteristics and risk factors in the throat. Patients are often older than 60. Men are twice more often affected than women. Overweight people are more prone to have both snoring and obstructive sleep apnea because they have increased amount of visceral fat present also in the throat. And the presence of volume occupying lesions like inflamed tonsils, stuffed nose, swollen throat in pharyngitis, superative sinuses, tumors of the nose, throat, mouth, etc., increase the risk of occlusive episodes. In order to resolve the occlusive episode, the patient needs first to have all of the lesions removed, all of these lesions uh, that narrow the throat and increase the risk of occlusions, otherwise called comorbidities. The patient cannot change the age or the sex to reduce the risk of throat occlusions, but can lose weight and try to avoid sleeping on the backside that reduces significantly the risk of throat obstruction during sleep. The mouthpieces, otherwise called oral devices, stabilize the mouth during the sleep keeping the lower jaw from moving backwards and this also prevents the tongue from falling into the deep throat occluding the airways. The majority of the centers for the treatment of sleep apnea with highest score of patient satisfaction from my online search mention these oral devices before the CPAP machines in the treatment of obstructive sleep apnea. This is probably for a reason, because a flow of an air, no matter how highly pressurized it may be, cannot keep the throat open, fighting against solid tissues like tongue, other soft tissues in the throat and jaw. From the CPAP machines with the two types of masks, the face mask provides some stabilization of the lower jaw, that implicitly keeps the tongue from falling into the throat during the sleep on the backside, but this stabilization is less effective than an oral device introduced in the mouth. The strips of the nose mask do not act on the lower jaw, so that the mechanism for the occlusion of the throat during sleep is not addressed in this type of mask. In the last part of this presentation, I provided a link for an oral device that prevents snoring and occlusive episodes in obstructive sleep apnea from my Amazon Associate program. Visit the Amazon website by clicking the link in the description below this video and judge for yourself. There are surgical procedures involving incisional operations that remove excessive soft tissue from the throat, of course the lesions if there are some lesions there, and there are also cited laser procedures that are meant to prevent the occlusion of the throat during sleep and apneic episodes in selected cases. However, the surgery for obstructive sleep apnea is not chosen at the first instance unless the condition is related to specific lesions in the throat. More than that,
Surgical procedures are complex treatment that must be carefully adapted to each case and they do not make the topic of this video, so I do not insist more in this direction. The age and gender cannot be changed to slower or prevent progression, but people can lose weight that significantly improve the condition and reduce the risk of occlusive episodes in obstructive sleep apnea. The use of mouthpieces prevent the obstruction of the throat and prevent episodes with hypoxia that has further serious consequences on all the tissues and organs in the body, so the use of these devices may be considered an important measure to reduce the progression of obstructive sleep apnea. In selected cases, CPAP or BPAP devices prevent hypoxia and reduce the risk of serious complications. For more information about these devices, keep watching the next video on YouTube entitled CPAP Machines and also read the website article by clicking the link in the description below this video. The most prominent symptom that marks the life of a patient with obstructive sleep apnea is snoring. This symptom should trigger a specialized assessment by a physician in all people, either they were or not diagnosed with sleep apnea. This approach may save people from getting complications of undiagnosed sleep apnea and sometimes can even prevent death. The snoring is resolved nowadays very nicely with mouth devices like the one presented in the last slides that I purchased for my family and also included in my Amazon Associate program. Click the link in the description below this video to visit the Amazon website and judge for yourself. All the other symptoms described in the central sleep apnea are present in patients with obstructive sleep apnea too. Episodes of shallow or stop in breathing, the characteristic feature of sleep apnea of all cases are present here as well. Just in patients with obstructive sleep apnea, the apnea episodes come after loud snoring, blockage and gasping. Low level of oxygen in the tissues, also known as hypoxia, that can be followed by complications like stroke, heart attack, kidney failure, even brain damage, etc., can be present here as well, as a result of lack of enough oxygen by the body organs. For selected cases that continue to have low oxygen levels, Despite of mouthpieces and reduction of occlusive episodes, the CPAP or BPAP or similar devices may be valuable tools. All the symptoms related to lack of adequate sleep, tiredness, drowsiness, fatigue, sleepiness, altered concentration, alertness, memory, coordination, fine movements, etc., all of them are present in obstructive sleep apnea patients too. Apart from all the events related to the condition itself, either central or obstructive sleep apnea, there are several consequences of the treatment methods in sleep apnea, and the most relevant are the adverse effects or complications of the use of CPAP machines. The treatment and management of these events is equally important for any patient with sleep apnea. Because the next session of the project Sleep Snoring and Sleep Apnea describes these topics in more details, I will only list these unwanted events here and briefly say something about their management. But before I speak about all of this, I want to underline again that this work is dedicated to all of those who believe in the art of empowering people by knowledge and is a part of our union projects. This work does not offer medical advice, but is designed to raise awareness of multiple medical issues that can appear in the life of people with sleep apnea, 
that may be undetected and therefore not properly treated in time. It is difficult to define whether these issues related to the CPAP machines are adverse effects or complications or just events associated with the use of these devices, so I feel more relevant if I use the terms in relation to their severity. However, one of these events can have different severities and particular impacts on the life and health for every patient. First event related to the use of CPAP machine is the strong impact on quality of life for patients and bedmates that come with every type of devices that deliver air into the airways during sleep, whether they are CPAP machines or BPAP or any other type of these devices. This major issue explains why, after one year of use, less than 50% of patients continue the treatment and at the beginning, less than 50% of patients are willing to accept this therapy. Before everything to be said, CPAP machines use every night for the rest of the someone life is a big challenge that should be considered only if it is absolutely necessary and not routinely in every patient. The impact on the quality of life for the patient comes in many ways, from the perception of being dependent by a machine for breathing every night, to the difficulty of keeping the device fit to the nose or on the face, the impact on sexual life, to the multiple adverse effects and complications that may be associated with the use of CPAP-like devices. Cognitive behavioral therapy improved significantly the cooperation and acceptance of this treatment for sleep apnea. Also, because many of the side effects and complications of the CPAP machine's utilization are because of incorrect usage of the device, efforts to train the patients how to use correctly these devices finally improve the quality of their life. The impact on the quality of life of bedmates is not something to neglect for any patient with sleep apnea. From the creation of a vulnerability of the patient in the couple with psychological effort, eff, effects on the sexual life and potency in men, to the noise produced by the machine more with higher pressure of the air, to the stress created during sleep on both people involved, the CPAP machines influence significantly the life of all people sleeping in the same dormitory. Though this aspect is pretty minimally discussed on all the articles and videos that I watched on the internet, if discussed at all, in my mind, this has an extreme importance for the final use of the CPAP machine by the patients themselves. In my judgment as a physician, because the use of the CPAP machines has influence on both patient and bedmate, significant efforts should be taken to help the bedmate to remain in the team. The patient is safer if there is someone present in the dormitory who may help in the emergency. The patient feels more comfortable to use the machine if the bedmate is happy and accepts the treatment. Finally, all the adverse effects of this complex treatment for sleep apnea may have less severity if they are not mixed with the stress of the patient increased by the stress of losing the bedmate. For this aspect of the quality of life of both patient and bedmate, a universal solution does not exist, but counseling and teaching both people in the same time about the conditions and risks for life of the patient, correct use of the CPAP machine, on top of behavioral therapy for both patient and bedmate, 
may significantly improve the conditions of the whole situation. That is why in my mind, all of these factors and circumstances should be treated very carefully and with particular attention by the physicians and other specialists managing patients with sleep apnea. The dryness of the airways, including nose, throat and mouth, usually do appear all the time because any flow of air conveys the water vapors as a well-known physical phenomenon and therefore any flow of air will, will dry the surfaces in its way. The dryness produced in various degrees by the airflow affects the mucosal membranes covering the whole airway from the nose, throat, mouth to the lower respiratory pathways like trachea and intrapulmonary airways. The respiratory tract mucosa needs to be permanently wet for a normal breathing and integrity of the function of respiration, immunity, voice, etc. The main cause for excessive dryness with the use of CPAP machine is represented by insufficient humidification of the air. The most common recommendation for this issue done by specialists is to always have attached to the CPAP machine a humidification system. If the device does not have a part with fluid and heating part, then some specialists recommend to purchase a separate humidification system to be attached to the CPAP machine. Another solution is to have good quality of the air in the room because practically the machine is recycling the air from the room before flowing it into the airways. This can be done with devices for aromatherapy and in the last part of this video, I provided a link to a product from Amazon for this purpose. Eye dryness and infections are produced most of the time by the leakage of the nose or face mask and the solution is to use only intact masks that fit the skin and have no leakage. Especially for face masks, men who wear beards or mustaches may have problems with perfect sealing of the mask over the face with hair. That is why some specialists recommend shaving of the area where the mask is fit. In my mind, this is another issue that may affect the quality of life First of all, because some men feel comfortable to have beard and mustache and to take them off to have a mask for the rest of their life may be a big psychological issue and stress. The recommendation with shaving is also something that in my mind is not something that can be followed because usually men are shaving their face in the morning and not at night and many men find difficult to shave the face every single day that may irritate their face. Because I am an eye consultant and surgeon practicing ophthalmology in Europe and United States for 29 years, while reading and preparing the material for this video and web article, I have learned and realized how big impact can the leakage of the mask have on the eyes in patients with sleep apnea. On one hand, it is a dryness of the eyes if there is leakage of the air that is driven towards the eyes. On the other hand, and something that I just realized now and I did not see published anywhere, the air flowed by the leaked mask is not just fresh air. This is air with bugs from the nasal cavity or from the mouth oral cavity. The nose and mouth, even if the person is healthy, have completely different flora than the eyes. For example, Staphylococcus aureus can be normally habitating in the nose and Streptococcus mutans, Staphylococcus and Lactobacillus can live happily in the mouth of a clinically asymptomatic patient. 
So flowing the air with this box into the eye of a patient with leaking mask and sleep apnea may lead just to dryness in healthy eye, but may produce severe postoperative infections in patients who recently had eye surgeries or intravitreal injections for their age-related macular degeneration or retinal venal occlusion or diabetic retinopathy. So my advice to all patients using CPAP machines and having eye procedures or even simple dry eyes is to discuss these issues with their eye specialists to get the correct and complete assistance. The impact of uh, contaminated airflow from the nose and or the mouth in patients wearing masks during the COVID pandemic while having intraocular injections in the American retina clinics is accepted as an increased risk for endophthalmitis after these injections. That is why in some American hospitals, the sealing of the mask with tape during the intravitreal injections with ILEA, Lucentis, Avastin, or other drugs used in the retina clinic is already implemented and mandatory in all patients wearing masks during the pandemic. In my mind, an exact similar thing does happen when the patients with sleep apnea using leaking masks after having surgery or intraocular injections so to use masks with no leakage is an important action to be taken to reduce the postoperative or post-injection infections in all patients with eye procedures. Aerophagia and bloating are produced on one hand because of abnormal flow of the air that instead of following strictly the airway path is deviated into the stomach and further into the bowel. As explained by many specialists in domain, but also a common sense for everyone who pays a bit of attention to the whole mechanism of apnea, in some patients with obstructive sleep apnea, the obstructive episodes during the sleep keep going even with CPAP machine used with high pressure of the air because in these patients, the airflow cannot fight against the solid tissues from the throat represented by the muscles like tongue, lower jaw, and soft tissues. In these patients, the pressurized air is deviated into the stomach and may leak around the mask. If the air goes wrong into the digestive system, like esophagus, stomach, bowel, called aerophagia, it is much more amount than what can be resolved with simple bloating pills. This adverse effect, or better said, inadvertent effect, must be addressed professionally by the specialists who prescribed the CPAP devices. You can see more about this topic in the next video and web article entitled CPAP Devices. The skin irritation is a common event in many patients and it does appear most often in patients with more sensitive skin. In my mind, it should not be forgotten that people can be allergic to the latex and different materials from which the masks are manufactured. Claustrophobia is another condition that can appear with the use of CPAP machines because of the mask. It may be more risk to appear in the case of a mask covering the face than just the nose, and some say the behavioral therapy may help. Rare adverse effects and complications are rare, but when they are produced, they mark the patient's life. Eustachian tube infection can appear because of abnormal flow of the air into the Eustachian tube through which the throat communicate with the middle ear. In similar way with the eye, the ear has different flora and bugs pushed into the Eustachian tube or into the middle ear can produce ear infection and consequently pain. 
Like for the eye patients, this work aims to raise awareness of all people with sleep apnea using CPAP machines. If they get ear infections, they should tell to their ENT specialist about the use of CPAP machine for a proper analysis of the causes of the ear infections. The solution is to have CPAP machine working properly, and if the abnormal flow into the ear still does persist, the sleep apnea specialist should be informed so that they can evaluate if the patient does not have obstructive episode of the throat despite of CPAP machine. The pressure buildup behind the cochlea in the ear is another possible complication of abnormal flow of the air directed into the ear and may be followed by headache and tinnitus that is noise into the ear. These patients should see an ENT specialist and should resolve the abnormal flow of the air with their CPAP machine that may sometimes resolve the issues. The dizziness can be produced by the same abnormal airflow into the ear with impact on vestibular system that has the role to maintain the balance of the body and the solution may be re-establishing the normal pathway of the airflow by the machine into the airways. Sneezing is a rare complication that can be triggered by multiple mechanisms in relation to the CPAP machine. First is extreme dryness of the nasal mucosa. Second, the cold air stimulation of the nasal mucosa by the airflow of the CPAP machine. And finally, the stimulation of the sinus mucosa by abnormal deviated airflow into the sinuses. All of these factors can be responsible for, for reflex production of sneezing. Measures like adequate humidification of the air or review of the correct directioning of the airflow into the airways, not sinuses, may resolve the problem in some cases. The sinus infections may be sometimes produced by the same abnormal flow of the air from the nose into the sinuses, bringing bugs that are normally not present in the sinuses like Staphylococcus aureus. The solution is the re-establishing the normal path of the airflow. Bronchitis may be a complication of the transmission of the infection from the upper airways like nose, infected tonsils, sinusitis, etc. The risk of dissemination of the infection is higher with the CPAP machines than with regular spontaneous breathing because the increased pressure of the air pushes more bugs than a regular breathing into the lower respiratory tract. The temporal mandibular joint disorders can appear over time with the use of CPAP masks because the strips of the masks around the head pull the upper and lower jaws backward that exerts certain amount of pressure that forces the temporal mandibular joint. The evident solution not to use the strips for the mask may not be realistically possible if the patient needs to use the CPAP machine because the other way to fix the mask like intranasal or oral tubes may be even more invasive. I want to share it with you one important thing. In sleep apnea as well as in many other health conditions, the treatment and the evolution of the disease under a specific treatment needs to be monitored. In patients with sleep apnea, the results of good quality in sleep can be easily monitored by patients themselves and by their family or partners. However, the sleep parameters like oxygen level in the blood, heart rate, stops in breathing during sleep cannot be monitored without a specific device. As I mentioned in all the other videos and website articles from the Sleep Snoring and Sleep Apnea project, 
There are some handy rings that monitor at home these parameters, being of real huge help for patients with sleep apnea to be continuously monitored at home, to be alarmed when these parameters go below normal, and also to alarm the entourage of the patients so that someone can help in emergency. So these rings not only that provide safety, that may save life in some cases. Because I consider this ring extremely important for patients with sleep apnea, I purchased myself one for my family and I also introduced this product in my Amazon Associate program. If you click the link in the description below this video, you can visit Amazon website and you can also purchase this ring if you or your loved ones need it. My disclosures for Amazon Associate program is this. As Amazon Associate, I earn from qualifying purchases. Though I do not provide to anyone medical advice, neither I push anyone to purchase any products, I want to share with you something that I believe in. As advised by many professionals treating efficiently sleep apnea, patients with obstructive sleep apnea cannot be safe and managed safely and efficiently with CPAP machines only. This is because a flow of air at any pressure cannot fight against solid tissues represented by the muscles and soft tissues in the throat that are relaxed during sleep, further obstructing the throat and produce apnea episodes. The correct and safe management of these patients does include oral devices to stabilize the mouth during sleep by keeping the jaw forward, preventing it and the tongue to fall into the throat during sleep. I purchased myself for my family such a device and I also including it into my Amazon Associate program and I find very important to share with you this link. You can find this link in the description below this video. This device has a soft material that is coating the surfaces that come in contact with the teeth. This material will imprint when it is put for the first time in the mouth, exactly like the dentist is taking the measurements to make new teeth for you. This way, this oral device for sleep apnea and snoring will not damage the animal of the teeth and will be well tolerated during sleep. In addition to this device and the ring, some patients may need CPAP machine or not, a question for which only your sleep apnea specialist can provide you the answer because each patient is different and no medical advice can be given without examining completely the patient. The quality of the air in the room where we sleep is extremely important for all people, but for people with sleep apnea and those using CPAP machine that pushes the air from the room under the pressure into the airway is particularly important. If you click the link in the description below this video, you can visit the Amazon website where from you can purchase the device for aromatherapy and air humidification that I also purchased for my family. Good Chef Slimming Plan to Lose Weight Without Exercise is my online course for slimming that teaches science about the weight gain, weight loss, and multiple other related information. Good Chef Slimming Plan is my own personalized plan for weight loss that I created for myself to lose weight and is very efficient. This plan includes the best from the most popular diets for weight loss like intermittent fasting and keto diet without following actions that increase the risk of complications or adverse effects. This way, my personalized plan for weight loss, Good Chef Slimming Plan, allows a wise and not stressful yet very efficient and quick slimming. 
You can learn more by visiting my website iStory with Narcisa at the link in the description below this video. This course is available as written text in PDF format and also as a video format so that to be accessible to all interested people, including those with visual impairments or hearing disability. If you purchase the course in one of the formats, you will get a free copy of the other format as a free bonus. Before I go, I have a question for you. Do you know what your real story is when talking about sleep apnea? And most importantly, do you have the right answer for the question, what is my best treatment for my sleep apnea? Thanks very much for watching. I wish you and your loved ones all the blessings and the best in the world. And if you have sleep apnea, I wish you the right specialist to write your story well in your favor. This video is a part of our union projects. See you in the next video.